Hello and welcome to God in the Family, a series where I, Gershley Karen Pierre, speak about biblical concepts and tie that into our population, our families, our communities, and of course, our God, so that we can help make better sense of our place in this world and what I perceive would be God's ideal society for us. Today's scripture is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, which states, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. If the Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion, he's an apex predator. And if an apex predator is seeking its prey, there are tactics that it employs. It's a very intelligent being. And I believe this whole, if you want to call it the loneliness gospel, that's being preached, especially to us, is demonic. I believe it is a tactic of Satan. You see, when God says, it is not good, then take him at his word. There's no reason to debate God himself. He said, it's not good. Because the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. I'm pretty sure if it was good, he would make it happen. But if he says it is not good for a man to be alone, then we should not support it. We should not keep telling our men, our women, not to get married. We should not keep persuading them that the single life is better. Because it is not conducive to the well-being of us building our nation. You see, the Bible talks about Israel strategizing numerically via marriage and reproduction. And we cannot continue to be divided and then dwindle. And then we have this apex predator called Satan who's striving against us. And don't think that Satan is just this random term. Satan works in tandem with the world he is the God of. The Bible calls the devil the God of this world. So he is in charge of this place right now. In a certain level, the world is under him. And the Bible talks about wickedness in high places. So he's not working alone. There are people that he uses to help deconstruct us. I mean, just think of, for example, if you look up documentaries on this, so it's common knowledge. It talks about how COINTELPRO was used against the Black Collective to keep the Black Collective from uprising against their own oppression. And that's what they tell us after the fact, years later. But how deep does that rabbit hole go? I believe that the conspiracy against us has everything to do with taking this particular scripture and reverting it. So when God said, it's not good to be alone, guess what the apex predator Satan's going to do? He's going to say, you know what? Let's cut them off from being a nation. If God says God wants a suitable helper for the man, what does the devil do? He's going to make it so that we are constantly at odds. But we feed into the devil whenever God tells us something and we do the opposite. It's like when the devil said, did God really say that you couldn't do this when he said that to Eve? Instead of you saying, yeah, he did. Ask Adam. What we'll do is we'll take the bait. And so as a collective, being alone is what gives us this vulnerability so that when Satan wants to say, well, did God do this? And you can now question that. Eve was alone when she was communicating with Satan. Adam was alone when Eve communicated with him and said, hey, try this. Because none of them were under the covering of God. He did not cover Eve and she did not cover him. We are to cover each other spiritually. We are to cover our homes. We are to cover our offspring. We are to cover our women, our men, and our children, and our community. We have to cover each other. We must be under the covering of God. So when the predator comes, which the Bible says the devil comes. In other words, it is certain that the devil will do it. It says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
It says that he is the father of lies, but he's also a very powerful fallen angel. And what if I, this is just my conspiracy theory, what if there are ministries that are, because if, if the COINTELPRO could do what it did to stop us from rising, then I consider that a ministry. But what if there are other ministries that are simply put here so that the black family doesn't exist? What if there are ministries that are simply put here to convince the black people not to get married? What if there are ministries that are simply put here to tell us that we should be alone? Rather than coagulating, rather than supporting each other, supporting each other within our homes, supporting each other within our communities, this world will say to be alone. And don't you notice that in media, whether it's commercials or television shows, etc., we're always depicted unmarried? Not with happy, beautiful, black nuclear families. And especially when the research says that you're supposed to have families, that's what's going to help you psychologically, and we're never depicted in those, that's tied to the ministries of the devil. That's tied to how this world is trying to concoct this mechanism to keep us alone. Because alone means vulnerable. Alone means we get to be susceptible to mind control. So that when the devil wants to say, did God say, did God say, you don't have a good comeback. But if I had my Adam and I'm Eve and the devil's telling me, did God say, I could say, well, let me ask my husband. And if my Adam had God, he could say, well, let me ask God. Let's not make that same mistake. And you know what happened? After that whole fall, Adam then said, The woman you gave me. And the woman blamed the serpent. Neither Adam nor Eve took accountability for their place and their own judgment. The devil, ironically, didn't you notice that? You go into Genesis. The devil didn't say, well, Lord, I just asked a question. So why is it that Adam and Eve, they were not accountable for what they did. They just blamed the next thing. So Adam blamed the woman. The woman blamed the serpent. The serpent just kind of was there. See, the devil's just going to be the devil. You don't have to blame him. God already told you his nature. The devil's going to do what the devil does. But the difference, what Adam and Eve did not consider, how to counter the devil. And how do you counter the devil? You resist him. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. And we must resist the devil. Whether it's demonic programming or whatever else that is telling you that we can't make this work. We can rise, but we got to work together as a team. We got to work together as a massive force so that we can stand together, not alone. Because the devil will have his conspiracies against God's people. God chose his people. I don't think the devil was happy about that. Because the devil is used to, when he was in heaven, being the best angel. He wants that kind of privilege. So don't let the devil take us out of the role that we as humans should fulfill. Don't let him take you out of the order and the blessings that God can give you when you abide according to his word. This is a complex conversation, but I can't go too deep into it because it should make sense even at the surface that if the devil wants to destroy the black family, the black family has a right to take a stand and say no. It is not good to be alone. Anything else? And just know it's a predatory force trying to make you vulnerable. It's not good for your kids when a mother's alone. It's not good for the man when he doesn't have a wife to come home to. It's not good for the woman when she doesn't have a husband of her own. We need to understand it is not good. So don't listen to any other agenda. Us who are in the pro-marriage side of things, we will take this stand for the family more marriages we got to see more families we got to stop listening to the programming
Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for the black family. I pray that you will increase the black family. There has been many attacks against these families. There have been many attacks trying to prevent us from even getting married. There has been many messages put out in high places to keep us from uniting as a collective. I pray you will awaken your people to who they are. I pray you will awaken them to what is going on. And I pray you will allow us to be found by and to find our God-given spouses. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will pour your spirit upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus that you will fight for us. Don't let us be alone. Don't let us be cut off. Don't let us be forsaken. The enemy who tries to attack us, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you'll continue to protect us. Please protect and restore our families. Please protect and restore our community as vulnerable as we are. And I pray you will open our mind and take us out of the mind control that we have to deal with. Thank you, Father God. And for those who are listening, thank you for allowing them to do so. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praises to the King of Kings. Praises to Jesus. Praises to the Lord on his throne. Hallelujah. The family. Family. Let us create the family. Let us uplift it. Hallelujah. Let us understand the importance of the family. Our collective is in shambles right now, but we can rise it as we uplift the family. Remember, it is not good to be alone. And let's put this on a multi-layered level. It's not good for the individual. It's not good for the collective. It's not good for the offspring. It's not good. Bless you and I hope and pray you will find and be found by the person that you can create family with. Let's be pro the family. Let's be pro God. That is all I have for today's episode of God and the Family. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned for more.